Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you the five-step process I use every time I paint something in color. And I do it for any subject. And so now if you look at this picture, let's focus mainly on this ball of eggs in the center. You might feel completely overwhelmed. There is so much happening here. We have these orange egg yolks with their subtle color variations, clear egg whites with all those complex reflections, the green ball with its glossy surface catching the light, that countertop surface with all its color complexity and texture, then you have those reflection highlights, cast shadows, all these surface textures competing for your attention. So how and where do I start? How do I mix the exact orange? Uh, what about all these reflections? So you don't start by trying to paint all these details. And in fact, if you jump straight to trying to match every little reflection and highlight, you will end up with a muddy and uh, confusing mess. So instead, I'm going to show you how to break this image down into five simple logical steps that will help you gain more confidence and understanding. All right, so step one is our quick line sketch. And I want to emphasize the word quick here. The whole point of this stage is to quickly map out where everything goes and to get a feel for the basic shapes and nothing more. So now you can see I'm keeping all these lines super loose and simple and I'm not worried about the perfect circles or getting every line exactly right. What I'm doing is uh, establishing the, the big relationships. So how big is the ball? compared to the canvas and where do the egg yolks sit inside that bowl and what is the general perspective of this shape so this is only about the positioning and the proportions this step is actually optional if you're painting something with really simple and obvious shapes you can absolutely skip this and jump straight into blocking out the, the shapes and i do that all the time and now we move into blocking in our shapes and this is where you get to be creative and expressive and what i'm doing here is painting each main shape as a separate layer uh, you can see that i have the ball as one shape each egg as its own shape the egg whites as another area and the, the reflection. It's up to you how you separate the shapes. You can do the different way than I do here. And the goal in this step is to design the shapes and have the flexibility to adjust things later. And at this stage, I'm not worried about getting the values exactly right. I'm not trying to match the exact lightness or darkness that much. And what I am focused on is making sure each shape looks nice and reads as separate from each other. The ball needs to be clearly separated from the background. The, the egg yolks need to pop out from the egg whites. And I'm looking at the reference for guidance, but I'm also playing with the shapes and proportions. Maybe I'll make the ball a little more dramatic or, or adjust how the egg yolks are positioned. We're not just copying machines, we're designers and we design shapes and try to have fun with it. All right, so now before we go into the next step, we need to understand our light situation. And this step is very important. So let's break it down. So first, I'm analyzing the overall tone of this image. I can see that this scene has a mainly warm feeling to it, but 
there are actually two different light sources happening here and they have different color temperatures. I can see that the main light in the room, probably the lamp, has a warm quality to it. You can see how the countertop and the, the objects have the slightly golden and cozy feeling. But then there is also the light coming from the window on the right side. And that light is much cooler and more neutral. This warm room light versus cool window light setup creates that um, nice natural color contrast that makes painting feel realistic and nice. Sometimes the contrast is completely the opposite. In night scenes, for example, the dominating tone is often cooler and the other light source is warm in contrast. The key is to always look and analyze and never skip that and guess. So I'm asking myself, What's the dominant light source? What color temperature is it? And are there any secondary light sources with different temperatures? This warm cool contrast is what's going to help me decide what colors to choose and it will just make more sense. And also what are the actual colors of the objects if there were no light there? If you think about the answers, it will be much easier to to make decisions in choosing the colors later so now we are moving into the values and color stage so instead of working in black and white i'm going to work with the dominant color tone for the scene so i start coloring with warm red and also thinking about that cool window light on the on the right so working with the dominant tone from the start I'm already thinking in color relationships and it makes everything more organic and just better for me this way. So with our shapes clearly blocked in, I can start building the value structure while keeping that main warm tone we identified. I started with the kitchen countertop because it's a big important area that will set the mood for everything else. I painted this countertop as a simple warm dark red gradient. I completely ignored all that complex texture as you see in the reference photo. I know it's tempting to jump into this detail but that's exactly the thing I wanted to avoid. As I work through these values and color relationships, I'm constantly doing few things. First, I'm squinting at both my painting and the reference to see the big value relationship without getting distracted by the details. I'm flipping the image horizontally to get the fresh view. I'm stepping back frequently, so I'm physically moving away from the screen to see if it reads from the distance. Sometimes I'm converting to the grayscale to check if my value structure is working. And while thinking about values, I can start adding other colors. So now I'm thinking about color contrasts and complementary colors. Complementary colors are the colors that look nice together and, and probably that's why I like the reference photo. The, the warm, vibrant orange and cool mint green are, are complementary and uh, the photo feels nice. And also while working on coloring, I think you don't have to be afraid to use the color picker on the reference and check the colors. Because the, the important thing here is to be aware of how the objects and the light interact. Now we are at the final stage, adding the final details. Uh, but here's the important thing, not every area needs the same level of detail. So I'm focusing my sharpest details and highest contrast right where I want the viewer's eye to go. So mainly on these egg yolks and the highlights on the ball. I worked a little bit more on the countertop and added that grain texture, but I keep it much more muted than 
what you see in the reference. I'm focusing on the details inside the ball. This is where I can look at all these reflections and think about where they are and how to simplify them effectively. The egg whites have a lot of reflections and little bubbles which add really nice detail and they make them feel wet and you can feel the material. And the inside of the ball has these subtle reflections of the room and light sources bouncing around. And I'm thinking about all these details but I'm trying to maybe remove or simplify some of them so they don't become overwhelming. Through this process, I'm constantly asking myself, does these details serve the painting or is it just a noise? And finally, we are done. Not, now everything is working together to, to support the feeling. If you keep adding details, just because you can see them in the reference, you will overwork the, the painting and, and you might lose that initial energy and feeling we, we've built up before. So let's sum up the process. Line sketch, quick and loose to map out the shapes, block in shapes and have fun with designing them, analyze the reference, define the lights and direction, paint values in the dominating tone, squint, step back, flip the image horizontally. Start adding other colors, think about color contrast, especially complementary colors, and use the color picker to learn from your reference. And final strategic details. If you think about these steps, the painting and coloring process will be much easier and understandable and you won't feel overwhelmed by the complex reference again. Thanks for watching and let me know your thoughts in the comments.